Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Welcome to my session, and we will talk about Helidon today. Uh, this is Helidon Twitter handler, Helidon underscore project, right? So if you are interested in about Helidon updates, subscribe to Helidon Twitter, and you will get updates directly to your Twitter. A little bit about myself. My name is Dmitry Kornilov. I am a Helidon project lead. I'm based in Prague. I'm leading development team, which is responsible for Project Helidon and also for various Jakarta components. This is not only team working on Helidon. We also have team in US, right? So we have two teams, right? Uh, again, about Twitter. Here is my Twitter ID, right? The second one is zero. Right. So if you want to subscribe, I'm posting updates about my projects. So you're welcome. Uh, agenda for today. Uh, this is the introductionary talk about Helidon. So I will explain what Helidon is, uh, what's the use cases of Helidon. Helidon comes with two flavors. So it's like two frameworks, uh, Helidon SE and Helidon MP. So I will talk about each of them. I will compare them. So I will talk about use cases, which one is better, which another one is better. Uh, of course, about features. And uh, I have two demos, one for Helidon MP, one for Helidon SE. And Helidon SE demo will include Graal VM, building uh, Graal VM native image out of Helidon SE application. Um, after that, I have one slide about our plans. So what are we planning to add to Helidon in future? And at the end, if you have time, uh, I will answer your questions. Right. I'm from Oracle, Safe Harbor. and don't make critical decision based on my talk. So don't trust me, basically. It's Right, and uh, here we go. Uh, one sentence description of what Project Helidon is. And it's a set of Java libraries for developing microservices. So Helidon is not an application server. It's a set of Java libraries. It means that uh, you use Helidon libraries in your application. You build a jar file. Uh, you package this jar file, executable jar file, into Docker image. You deploy this Docker image wherever you want it to deploy it, to your local machine, to your VM, to Kubernetes. And uh, we are friendly to all of these technologies. We support Docker, we support Kubernetes, and I will demonstrate, at least I will demonstrate uh, Docker file and AppYAML for Kubernetes. I won't run it because we are limited in time. What is Helidon? What does it mean? Uh, Helidon means swallow in Greek. And according to Wikipedia, swallow is a bird. Uh, I don't actually remember exactly what Wikipedia says, but actually it's small and uh, uh, flies very fast and uh, has a high maneuverability, which is perfect for darting through the cloud. So like a, we would like Helidon to be like, like a swallow, small, lightweight, fast cloud native. And this is how it's spelled in Greek language. Uh, a little bit about Helidon positioning. Uh, we position Helidon as open, innovative project which supports standards. And uh, we are providing open source support for Helidon. For Helidon. So it's open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, here is the URL. And what's more important, it's Apache 2 licensed. So uh, Andres already talked about open source stuff. So Helidon is one of the projects, which is Oracle projects and licensed under Apache 2. It's very permissive license. You can basically use whatever you want with the source code. You can fork it. You can use it in production, whatever. And supported active project means that uh, our team, Helidon team, 
uh, providing open source support for Helidon. So let me just switch to my browser to uh, demonstrate what we have. First of all, this is uh, our GitHub repository, right? So we have actually more stars than I have on a screenshot. I need to update the screenshot. Uh, so if you go to commits here, you see that uh, we have commits almost every day. Now, it was those three days ago because of uh, weekends. Uh, quite a lot of commits. So our team is contributing a lot to Helidon. We are adding new functionality by fixing bugs, right? So we also have a lot of issues. Not all of them are bugs. Uh, some of them are feature requests, right? We are trying to be open. Uh, look, a lot of bugs are already assigned to developers. Uh, we actually have an open uh, board for tasks prioritization so this is our scrum board let's put it this way so you can check uh, what's going on with what we are doing basically uh have some pull requests and so on right uh also uh talking about uh supporting we have uh, a website helidon.io Look, it has a nice parallax thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice, right? So uh, this is kind of a general information. This is all I will, I think I have already talked a little bit about that. And the important is support the technologies we have. So this here we support many things. Uh, and uh, our community section uh, explains how to reach us. So if you have questions, we prefer Stack Overflow. Uh, you can also join our public Slack channel to communicate directly with us, directly with developers. Folks are quite active there. We have a FAQ um, and a GitHub. I already demonstrated the GitHub, right? Uh, we also have a blog with, uh, on Medium. Uh, there the post articles, not only big, anyone can post article uh, if you agree with us to put it into our official blog. So you see there are some technical stuff there, right? Okay. Uh, and what's the most important from my perspective? There is documentation. So we have quite a rich documentation section and uh, it's ASCII-Doc based. And uh, we had a tweet some time ago from a doc author saying basically that, uh, take a look here. This is nice usage of doc. Quite proud of it. So documentation, I'll just open a random page. We have some pictures there. We have some text with some code samples. So it's kind of easy to read. Uh, it's not only documentations, it's also guides. Uh, we see that guides is very important. Uh, because uh, if you're looking for some kind of functionality, like for instance, writing metrics or writing health checks or writing JPA or using GraalVM, for instance, or full tutorial of Helidon MP, uh, you can just uh, go there, right, and uh, copy paste this code into your project and uh, it's well explained and so on. Uh, there are also two quick start guides. So, quick start guides is for startup. Or we, now, if you want to start with Helidon, right? So one for SE, another one for MP. And my demos, what I'm going to demonstrate, are actually based on that. Uh, we have Maven archetypes, which generate a project like a template project with quite a rich functionality, uh, which you can use as a template for your first application. Um, it's actually quite good because we added there already a Docker support, Kubernetes support. So uh, many things are already supported there. You just need to modify it a little bit, add your stuff, and you have your microservice ready. Uh, let me come back to my slides. All right. Uh, if you are a WebLogic licensed customer, uh, you are automatically supported for Helidon use. Uh, this is actually great because uh, if you are a WebLogic user, this is... Uh, application server, we run monolith applications there, uh, and you want to migrate your applications to microservices, uh, 
Hilidon microservices, or you want to extend your application using microservices, then uh, I think it's a great idea to use Hilidon because you don't lose support, right? So if you have any questions, you can submit bugs, you have priority support and so on. Right, so you've seen that already. Uh, so you know what next one is going to be, right? So that's kind of... Uh, uh, Anyway, so uh, this is uh, how Helidon fits into the landscape of uh, modern Java microservices frameworks. And uh, quite a few of these frameworks are here, and I categorized them into three categories, micro frameworks, micro profile based frameworks, and full stack frameworks and sorted out by footprint size from smaller to larger, right? So micro frameworks, uh, samples are uh, Javelin, Spark Java, Micronaut, uh, small footprint frameworks, but functionality is sometimes limited because of the size. Micro profile based frameworks, frameworks implementing micro profile, by the way, uh, raise your hand who knows what micro profile is. Okay, no one knows what micro profile is, right? So it means that I will take a little bit more time explaining later, right? Uh, for now, uh, there are some frameworks implementing micro profile, like Open Liberty, Payara Micro, Thorntail. Some of them are like a cut version of a bigger application servers. So they are bigger than micro frameworks. Functionality is richer. And full stack Spring Boot Drop Wizard. I think everybody's familiar with that. Everybody knows Spring Boot. Everybody knows Drop Wizard. So this is very, very um, functional, rich frameworks. You can basically build wherever with them. Uh, but uh, as a disadvantage, the footprint size is quite large. So how Hilidon fits here? We're covering two categories. We are in micro frameworks with Hilidon SE. And we are in micro profile frameworks with Helidon MP, right? So SE and MP are different frameworks. So if you are uh, uh, you creating microservice, you use MP or you use SE, right? So you can't use both. So uh, consider these are two different frameworks with different purposes and uh, different development experience. Here is a comparison slide, right? So first of all, SE is smaller, right? It's a micro framework, footprint size about seven megs, tiny. Uh, it's functional style, so uh, lambdas out there, let's put it this way. It's reactive, right? So you will program your, your application, your C application is a reactive application. Uh, it means that it can be very fast. Uh, it's transparent, no magic. We call it no magic. Means that uh, there are no notations, there is no dependency injection, which is pure classic Java SE application. I will have a sample. It's actually quite fun to create microservices without annotations, without dependency injection, which adds a lot of magic there. And magic is good and bad. Good because it's easy and bad because if you uh, try to create something which is not coverage by, uh, can, covered by default magic behavior, then you are in trouble. You need to, you don't understand how it works, and you need to find some kind of solution, uh, which sometimes not very easy. And the last thing, uh, Helidon SE support uh, producing Graal VM native images. So you can build a native executable for your operating system or Helidon SE. On the other hand, MP, MicroProfile. You don't know what MicroProfile is. Next slide, I will demonstrate what is that. Uh, footprint is larger, bigger, so it's about 21 meg. Uh, it's declarative style, it's dependency ejection, so development experiences uh, like Spring, or like Java EE, so absolutely the same, with annotations, with injections. Uh, we also support uh, JPA, JTA persistence, and we support Oracle Universal Connection Pool. And the uh, Graal VM is supported, but native image is not, 
right? So it's important to say for MP, we don't support GraalVM native image yet. Yet means that in the next version of Helidon 2.0 next year, uh, we are going to support it. Folks are working on it now. Uh, okay, to better understand the difference, uh, this is the same service restful service which returns hello world if you do get a request on hello endpoint so look how it looks on helidon ac and this is how it looks on helidon mp right so this is kind of spring like stuff so this is jacks rs annotations uh, and here you see lambdas are there um, fluent api is here builders is here so this development experience is very similar to what uh, Express.js JavaScript framework provides, and we were we were inspired by that when we were building uh, Helidon SE Reactive Web Server, right? Uh, Helidon SE is better if you really need something reactive. If you are working with streams, right? If you really need some fast processing on something, or you just want to have fun with this new API, so uh, Helidon SE application is smaller, uh, or if you need to build a GraalVM native image, right? So you use Helidon SE. And Helidon MP you use if you work with Java EE, right? So it's the same components, it's the same development experience. Or uh, if you work with Spring, right? Basically it's the same, provides the same development experience. So you don't need to learn the new stuff. Right, so architecture of Helidon is we build MP with some CDI extension on top of SE, which makes it very fast and very small. All right. Now, a little bit about MP, demo, about SE, demo, and we finished. Microprofile is what I promised to say about microprofile. Uh, microprofile is uh, a set of cloud native APIs. So uh, open source APIs hosted at Eclipse Foundation. Uh, MicroProfile is kind of de facto standard because it's supported by the major vendors. Uh, it uh, started in 2016. Uh, that time it was not really clear what Oracle is going to do with uh, uh, Java EE. And uh, there was a huge demand on the market for Java APIs for microservices for cloud, right? Because at that time, 2015, microservices started to be popular, right? So uh, the first version of MicroProfile had only three APIs, and all three were from Java EE, it's CDI, JAXRS, and JSONP. Then now we have about 13 APIs, and the release cadence is one major version per year and three minor versions per year. So uh, comparing to Java EE release cadence, which is once per four years, uh, it's cool, right? Uh, and uh, these are uh, components uh, we support in Helidon MP and green stuff is microprofile components, right? So MicroProfile has configuration, metrics, health checks, fault tolerance, JW certification, open API, open tracing, and REST client, right? So all of these are specifications, MicroProfile specifications means that potentially if you create an application and uh, you want to migrate to another MicroProfile provider, uh, it will be relatively easy, uh, I can't say smoothless, but relatively easy to uh, migrate, right? Um, all microprofile implementations, all microprofile vendors support the same APIs, right? Orange stuff, Jakarta EE APIs, and uh, this is what we support in Helidon. It's not a part of any API, so it's gRPC. It's great if you want to create mobile applications, communicate with mobile applications, and so on. Uh, small tag SE means that we support the same functionality in Helidon SE with Helidon SE flavor. Right. Enough talking, let's just uh, do a little bit of coding. Uh, so Helidon MP demo. Uh, the demo is based on the quick start guide, 
this guy. So uh, what uh, you have to do, or what I've done, or I've done it already uh, to save time, I used that command, copy it and paste it into terminal to generate a Helidon MP quick start application. I generated it in uh, Helidon Japan folder. So you see that I have two SE and MP. So it's here is for MP. Let's just move there. Helidon quick start MP, all right? And uh, uh, I opened it in my IDE, in, in an idea here, right? So uh, what is quick start application? It's a small RESTful web service. Um, which it's, it's a greeting service. It has three endpoints. Uh, one endpoint is uh, returns hello world. Another one returns personalized greetings. So you pass a parameter, your name, it returns hello, whatever name is. And third endpoint is used to change your greeting from hello to something else, right? I will demonstrate it in a bit. Uh, but let's start with POMXML. So look, POMXML is very clear. So we have some dependencies and we have a build. So nothing extra, nothing, no fancy stuff, right? So it's very easy to understand what's going on. We have here, as I was saying already, Docker file and RPAML for Kubernetes. So it's easy to build a Docker image based on this um, application and it's easy to deploy it to Kubernetes. Uh, what this application is, is JAXRS resource. So see here, um, it's annotation driven, right? So injection is here. Uh, here is how we configure our endpoints. So uh, this endpoint is get request on this endpoint is handled by this method, right? And it returns hello world. Uh, we have another endpoint here and uh, the third one where you can change your greeting is here and it's put, right? So, uh, if you are familiar with JAXRS, uh, this is exactly that, right? Where we are using Jersey in behind. Okay, now let's build it, make sure that it works. Maven package. It's usually quick to build it. But my machine is a bit slow today. So it's running some tests already. Right? Yep. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, usually it's actually faster. I don't know why it's kind of slow today. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to demonstrate how big this application is. And uh, it's in target folder. You see that Helidon Quick Start MP, it's only 13K, right? And uh, it's only 13K because all the dependencies are in this folder, in the lips folder, right? And uh, it's done for purpose. Uh, because your dependencies is uh, what you are not going to uh, change uh, very often, right? So uh, you can make your Docker build the way, the layer way that you put your libraries into, <coughs> sorry, one layer and uh, your application in another layer and your application is frequently changes. So uh, you don't need to rebuild every time a layer with your dependencies. Right. Uh, let's take a look how many dependencies are there. Quite many, right? But how big is it? Twenty-one meg. So this is not so big. So uh, for the application which uh, which is uh, restful microservice supporting health check supporting metrics, supporting tracing out of the box, 21 meg is very small. Uh, for example, a similar application in Spring Boot will be about 80 to 120 max. So the difference is about 10 times. 
Okay, let's just run it, see how it works. Uh, I was saying that this is executable jar, so we run it like that. Uh, the startup time, right? Um, for updated on MP applications, it really depends on how many runtime initialization is going to be there. We are using CDI. So it's usually about four seconds for this kind of application. Uh, we will compare startup times with Helidon SE and with Graal VM to demonstrate the difference. Right, so it's running. So let's just check. I will do Kuru uh, to the first endpoint, greet endpoint. Hello world. Now let's greet myself. The second endpoint with parameter, hello Dmitry, right? And the third endpoint, uh, we will change uh, our greeting from hello to, see I'm passing Jason here, like new greeting. Uh, I wanted to put hello in Japanese here, but I don't have a Japanese keyboard. Uh, sorry about that. So I'm just saying hey. Make sure that it works. It works, right? Uh, but as I was saying, uh, here on MP out of the box supports health checks, metrics, and tracing. So do you know what health check is? No. Okay. So it requires a little bit of explanation. So uh, we are cloud native. We are about the cloud, right? So when your application runs in the cloud. Uh, it can be scaled by running multiple nodes, multiple instances of your application. And uh, it can be hundreds of instances, right, if your application is big. Uh, what if some of their instances are failing? Because, you know, it happens. If it never happened to you, it happens. It will happen in the future. Uh, it means that this node has to be restarted or discarded and new node has to be created, right? But how uh, the system discover that your node is not responding or not healthy, right? Uh, this is exactly why health check is needed. Health check is micro profile specification, right? And it's all about uh, providing an endpoint which returns the node state. And the state is up or down, right? And uh, it's, com it's calculated from different health checks. So you can have X number of health checks. Well, first health check can be like hip size check, right? So if run out of hip, then down. If hip is fine, then okay, uh, up, right? Another one can be disk space check. Third one can be, I don't know, database connection check. Uh, it's up to you, right? So, uh, and their final result, uh, if any of your health checks returns down, then the final result is down. It means that your node has to be uh, restarted or discarded. And health checks is not designed for human beings. It's designed for automatic systems. Uh, Kubernetes can deal with it, right, um, automatically. Let me demonstrate. So we uh, do let's say liveness, we have liveness health check and readiness health check. Readiness, it means that it, uh, for readiness, your application ready to serve requests or not, and liveness for like when it's already running, uh, checking is it still fine or not. So we'll do liveness, endpoint is health check leave, right? You see, uh, it's up, and by default, we have two checks, three checks. One is deadlock check, which is fine. Another one, a dispatch check is also fine. And heap memory check is also fine. And uh, you can use health check API in your application to create your custom health check. And all of them will be added there, right? These are health checks. Uh, another good feature which we have in Helidon MP is metrics. And if a health check is about node state, Metrics is about telemetry, right? So uh, you can record some data and look at that using some nice graphical UI. So there are some open source tools which are uh, uh, designed for metrics. 
One of them is Prometheus, which collects metrics data. And another one is Grafana, which displays that collected data in the nice uh, graphs and stuff, right? And what this data is, it can be, let's say, um, a number of uh, requests to a particular endpoints. So how many times the endpoint was called? Or it can be uh, an average time of execution of some of your methods. Uh, there are different metrics which you can collect, and it's up to you what to choose. Again, it has a nice API, annotations-based API. You annotate your methods with metrics annotations, and uh, uh, in Grafana, you will have a nice graphs, right? Uh, it works out of the box, again, uh, with Helidon MP. The metrics look like that, and it's in JSON format, right? Uh, if I remove that header, then uh, we will get it in Prometheus format. Sorry, there is an error because it's not JSON. Metrics, right? So this is Prometheus format, which is kind of a properties file. And this is what Prometheus understands. If you've got Prometheus installed, then by default, you'll get all the data Prometheus understands, right? Uh, let's come back here. So uh, metrics, three sections, vendor metrics, base metrics, and application metrics. I don't have application metrics because I don't have custom metrics, right? So base metrics is what each micro profile metrics implementation should provide. So if you use Payara, it will provide the same things, right? If you use, for instance, Quarkus, it will provide the same things. Uh, vendor is what vendor decides to put there. So we here don't developers decided to put there these metrics, right? Like how many requests we have, some gRPC stuff, uh, and so on, right? And application, I don't have it again because uh, I don't have any custom metric. Uh, this is what you added to your application, right? Okay. Good. I think we've done with Helidon. We don't have much time, right? So I need to speed up. Uh, let's talk about a C. So uh, Helidon SE, three components, Reactive Web Server Configuration and Security, right? Uh, Reactive Web Server, which is the main component you are using. Uh, this is what inspired with Express.js. I demonstrated a small sample before. This is Reactive Web Server. Uh, configuration is used to configure Web Server or to configure security. We support multiple layers of configuration with overriding. We support hierarchical configuration model. We support dynamic updates, means that if your configuration updated, your application can be notified without restart. It's extensible, so you can create your own configuration sources. And security, we basically support authentication providers, authorization providers, everything related to security. Uh, works the way that you configure everything in the config file. You say in your code, apply, and it applies everything, right? It's also extensible, so you create your own providers. GraalVM, important thing, uh, you can build, as I was saying already, a native executable, native image based on Helidon application. Uh, advantages, very fast startup time and uh, small executable size comparing to your application plus JVM. Uh, we support two profiles. You can build native executable on uh, for uh, the operating system you are running on, means that for Mac OS in, in my case. And uh, the second option is to build a Docker image uh, with a Linux executable inside. This is for distribution. OK, let's go demo. Again, I'm using Quick Start. Again, I already have opened it in IDE, right? And I will start with a POM file. Again, this is very clear. So nothing really extra here. Uh, it's very understandable. And comparing to MP, look, we have different structure. We have a main class here, which has a main, main method here, right? So this is Java SE application, not annotations here, no dependency injection. So in main method, what you do, you start your server. Before that, you set up login. 
uh, you read configuration, you provide this configuration to your server, right? And after that, you start your server manually, right? And uh, this is a routine which you create for your server. Uh, so here you provide it, right? And uh, uh, when you build your routing, you manually include metrics support because it's no magic, right? So you have to do it everything manually, but it makes it understandable. Uh, you create health check support and you create our grid service, right? Which is this one. And grid service, this is basically our business logic. Uh, configure it this way. So uh, that's a path, that's a handler, that's a path, that's a handler, that's a path, that's a handler. And here are these handlers, right? Functionality is absolutely the same as for Helidon MP application. I will build it. Uh, we will look at the sizes. And after that, we will compare startup times, right? So uh, I will stop my MP stuff. Uh, before doing that, right, I'm not demonstrate how it runs. It runs uh, basically business logic is absolutely the same. It works. Health check is also supported. Metrics is also supported, right? What I will do, I will do one modification uh, to measure the startup time after the server finishes initialization and ready to uh, uh, serve your requests, uh, I will exit like that, right? And I will use Unix time utility which measures the process running time. Uh, and this is going to be our startup time. Mm -hmm. Let's just move to Helidon SE folder and build it. New package. Uh, it builds uh, faster than MP because it's smaller. It's already running tests. And it didn't run the test because of my modification, right? So I need to skip tests. All right. We're done, right? Let's take a look at the sizes. So Helidon SE application, 20. 8 max. Again, dependencies are in the lips folder, listing lips folder. See, there are much less dependencies than in MP. Another thing here, we are trying to use JDK for everything. We are not willing to add uh, many third party dependencies. This is by design, right? So uh, we are not like having whole of the world as third party dependencies as other frameworks do. So quite a few of them. And the size is 6.4 max. So whole application is less than 7 max. And this is three times less than Helidon MP application and like uh, more than 10 times less than normal cloud native stack application, right? Okay, now let's run it and you will see the start time time. I'm running with time, time, Java, uh, jar, uh, target, Helidon, SE jar. Oh, sorry, mistake. 2.77, right? So that's the start up time. 2.26, 2.72. So it's more than two seconds, right? Uh, now let's build a native image, GraalVM native image based on this application, right? And in order to build it, I just need to uh, add a profile, P native image. That's it. And now this command will build a native image, right? Uh, unfortunately, it will take some time. On my machine, it takes about two, three minutes to build a, a native image. Uh, image, right? This is one of the disadvantages of native images. It takes time to build, right? Talking about native images, right? Uh, advantages, now, it, as you see it, fast startup time and smaller size and smaller memory footprint, I mean, uh, RAM footprint, right? Uh, it's a trade-off, right? Startup time uh, you will see that it's really, really small. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the difference in a couple of seconds or maybe three seconds doesn't really make sense if uh, your port provisioning in Kubernetes takes about 30 seconds. Um, 
memory is definitely an advantage. So when you're running your application in the cloud, you're actually paying for memory, right? And uh, a lower memory, better for you, right? Uh, comparing with hotspot, hotspot application takes more memory, uh, but hotspot knows about your runtime environment and can optimize your application uh, based on your runtime environment. So your application will run always fast. GraalVM, on the other hand, doesn't know anything about your runtime environment, right? Uh, it optimizes it on compile time. It's fast. But uh, if you compare it long term, at some point, application running on hotspot will become faster, or at least the same performance. Why? Because it knows about your runtime, right? So using GraalVM as a trade-off, it really depends on what you need it really depends on what you expect from your application right if it's a long running service maybe it's better you don't care about your mem about memory and startup time then uh, i guess that hotspot is a better solution if you care about memory and startup time uh, like it's great for functions for instance so it runs almost immediately then graal vdm is definitely your option right so think carefully uh we have it built, right? Uh, take a look at the size first. So uh, this is our native executable, 28 max, right? I think before, actually, I, have, I had it built before. And uh, uh, I looked, when I was saying a size of a jar file, I was saying 28 max. It's 11K only, right? So my mistake, right? Um, 28 max is native image, right? Is it big 28k, uh, 20 f max? No, it's not. So uh, you, uh, if you distribute your application with uh, JVM, it will be much more, right? Let's just run it and see how fast it starts. Time. Ta target. Here we go. See. see? 0.03, 0.03. So it starts almost immediately, right? So for comparison, uh, on uh, JVM, uh, application starts on my machine about two, uh, two seconds, right? And here on MP application about four seconds, right? So that's it about GraalVM. About performance, I have some graphs here, but I already talked about that. So that's a memory footprint, lower is better. SE is very small, MP is bigger, 21 meg, and uh, traditional cloud stack is about 80, right? And startup time, uh, on GraalVM, you, you almost can't see it, it's so small, right? Get it on SE, uh, I have here below two seconds, and it's because my machine uh, in the hotel demonstrated it below two seconds, right? Uh, and the Helidon MP is about four and a half seconds, right? Another important graph here, it's based on open source data uh, from tech and power data. Um, number of requests processed per second. So this is Helidon SE. This is Micronaut, it's a bit higher, but we're working on that. Uh, but what's important, Drop Wizard and Spring Boot, so we are significantly lower. So basically, Helidon SE is faster, almost twice faster. Right? And quickly about plans. We are planning to release new version uh, next year, uh, first part of new year. I put Q1 here, but we don't have a date set up yet. So it will be in at the beginning of 2020, uh, which will add. Uh, Graal VM support for Helidon MP, so we'll be able to build native image from Helidon MP application. It will have reactive HTTP client and Helidon DB client for Helidon SE. Helidon DB client will allow you to use any JDBC driver, not reactive driver, a very active way, so it's quite a cool feature. Uh, and it will provide some common uh, API to execute query and so on. Uh, it important that it uh, doesn't introduce 
your own query language, right? So you'll still use query language of your database. So it's quite a cool stuff. It's going to be a preview version, not production ready. And we are planning to add message in Kafka. It's questionable to this release or to the next release after that. Yeah, Thank you very much.